I would like to show you uh, an example of the uh, implementation of a semantic media wiki for uh, the interactive pollutant mapping and uh, this is done together with Alexander Gesin from Gesin IT because uh, my company, as he will show you, is, has different fields of work so I'm certainly not the IT guy behind this but we have provided the, um, the knowledge in the field <clears throat> and uh, we are mostly doing radiation protection and environmental things, work safety and so on. I will just set the scene a little bit, give you the, the regulatory requirements <clears throat> and yeah, say something about the current solutions, mainly the Anon, um, show our, our aims and the ontology development which took somewhat longer than we expected in this case and uh, then go into a live demo and uh, Alex will then present some technical details behind the uh, curtains. Well, what are we talking about? Indoor pollution is resulting from, from building materials. Uh, the, the probably most prominent one is asbestos, which was used in the uh, 70s and 80s uh, as a fireproof in, in insulation. And um, yeah, polychlorinated biphenyls are, have been used in elastic materials, especially in seals, and uh, especially in seals between concrete parts. So if you see buildings, you can also see a lot of these buildings in Vienna that are made up by uh, large concrete parts. It's very likely that there is PCB in the seals between these concrete parts because the con concrete parts must be able to move and so you need an elastic seal between. There are also some examples of uh, polyaromatic hydrocarbons. <coughs> mm, they are known from, from char or things like this but they have been used also in um, adhesives and also in seals, uh, especially in, in wooden floors like this one. There might be also something below, but I think the building is too new, uh, so there is uh, uh, probably nothing behind. Then there are also pesticides like um, hexachlorocyclohexane <coughs> that have been used as wood protectives, and of course some of this is also going into the indoor air. For the, we will now focus on the example PCB, which is in the moment very in the focus in Germany and in Switzerland. <coughs> the, um, yeah, we're going now a little bit chemical, which might be <laughs> an, an, uh, common for, for most of you. Uh, this is a group of, of, um, um, of chemicals. The, the problem is that you don't have a sole chemical, but you have a group of 200, 211 different congeners because there are many <coughs> components inside there and this makes the analytics quite complicated. As I already said, it's used in, in elastic material. The, the good thing about these chlorinated uh, hydrocarbons is that they are fire resistant to a very high degree and this is what, why they were widely applicated. Here are some examples. In the, in the upper row you see buildings and, and pieces where this is used. You can see here there are the elastic seals and this is a typical building where you would expect PCB uh, to be uh, inside and also outside. And you can see if this is heavily con contaminated, this also involves, involves uh, during the remediation uh, some work safety and uh, it is mainly done by hand. So this is really difficult work. <coughs> Why are we so keen to remove the PCB? Because it's neuropathological and it also results some oxidative stress. It, due to the synthesis of the uh, uh, different compounds, it may contain dioxins and furans <coughs> that are quite, uh, quite known to be cancer again. This is just to show you that the, the metabolism can be quite complex and um, that there are different ways how it uh, works in the uh, in the organism and in the end there are things like this is unfortunately in German like uh, cancer uh, the, the neurotoxicity and the immunotoxicity are the most prominent uh, things <coughs> the regulation regulators uh, have seen quite early that these uh, chemicals are problematic 
The usage in, in open system has been banned in 1973. The production has been banned in 1993, but uh, small amounts in uh, condensers, especially condensers for um, energy saving uh, lighting, <coughs> were allowed until 2010. <coughs> they are part of the Rotterdam Convention, uh, a convention which banned 12 uh, chemicals uh, that were widely used worldwide. It's called the Dirty Dozen. So, yeah, and there is also a limit now for for rubble, and this is a real issue because the the limit is rather low. If you imagine, um, <coughs> this means a few gram of PCBs in a ton of rubble can ruin completely the uh, disposal pathways of your rubble. Uh, in Germany, at least, the PCB directives are on state and, unfortunately, not on federal level. So there are slight differences from state to state. But the regulatory limits are equal in, 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 each, in all the states. There is the, the lower limit, which says below 300 micrograms per cubic meter uh, indoor air. You're on the safe side. <coughs> then there is a, let's say, medium level between 300 and 3,000 micrograms per cubic meter. It's a level where you should observe if there is some changes in the concentration. You uh, can try to remove the source if this is easily done. Sometimes it's also in, in such uh, ceilings uh, that you have PCBs. This can be easily removed. If it's in the, in the seals, it's much more complicated. And there is a level <coughs> that indicates immediate action <coughs> because uh, at, at this level, you can expect that there are toxicological consequences of this um, of this level. Now the current solution to, to map the pollution of buildings are, are often Excel sheets. We've heard this uh, several times uh, on this conference that this is still the state of the art. Sometimes there exist access databases where you list the rooms of the building and then the, uh, uh, the special levels. Usually, they are only given static reports to the stakeholders, or there are static web, web pages uh, set up to inform the stakeholders. Because in one of the of the federal states in North Rhine-Westphalia, uh, there is a um, requirement in the uh, regulation that says that you have to inform all the stakeholders that are working or living inside this building if you found <coughs> PCBs. Maybe Franz, I think this is the important part because if you're yeah. the, the the one who's in charge of the facility, you are the one uh, to say, okay, I'm compliant, I'm following all these things yeah. and uh, all these scary numbers we've seen, uh, you are the guy to make sure that uh, the whole thing is tracked and that all the, the parties are in, that are involved yeah. uh, and with the right numbers. Yeah. And of course, uh, this is also a concern for the people that work in such a building. Um, <coughs> the, the customer we've talked with, where we developed this, this uh, demo, um, they are the, uh, one of the biggest universities in Germany and they have one huge building and the whole building was set up at the same time and of course with the same materials. This means this contamination is spread out over a building uh, with about five or six thousand people in, in, on a daily basis. Uh, this means that there's a lot of concern and people ask you, um, am I safe to come to my office? Um, is, it, is it good to use the kitchen? Um, should we stay at home better and, and such things? And you have to deal with this. And, and of course, um, depending on, on how the, the uh, offices are furnished, it, it, it depends. The, the, the levels can quite be quite different. Also, the, the whole building is contaminated, but depending on the floors and, and on other measures and on, on the paints and, and so, such things, it depends what is the actual level. What we then developed um, is a, a kind of an ontology, and we, we very soon saw that this is more complicated than we thought in the beginning. <coughs> well, I, I think I switch now to the live demo and, and show you some of the features. Oh, this goes now to the third one thing, I think. Um, no, it's, um, yeah. Okay. So the, the, uh, we have set up a start page that shows uh, the site and that shows also the, the newest measured values. <clears throat> uh, maybe we should uh, warn to the Twitter guys, uh, 
this shows actual, uh, let's say it's an imaginary case from University of Regensburg. So this is just a yeah. fictive case. Yeah. This is not real values. Oh, no. uh, I'd like to prevent that uh, oh, <laughs> University of Regensburg uh, is PCP uh, things. Uh, <coughs> good, so good. this is just because we know the location and we have the map, so yeah. <laughs> don't spread the bread. <laughs> This, this might be difficult to, <laughs> to explain this to them. This might become interesting. Yeah. <laughs> Maybe they need a solution afterwards. <laughs> afterwards, I guess so, yeah. yeah, yeah sure. <laughs> okay, and, and what we did is with uh, at semantic annotations, you can click on this map and you see the, the object that's behind and uh, you can go down there. So that's actually the semantic image uh, annotator. Mm -hmm. um, extension and we use it for the navigation uh, for the uh, yeah, structure of the buildings and then you can see that there's a, the, the building structure and you can go for a certain facility this is one of the um, lecture halls you can again see the location on the on the very floor um, in some cases we also have some images let me see there uh, I think it there is no image. Yeah, there are some images also. This is especially important um, if you are not going, because we can also, the, the, the objects here are not limited to rooms or, or to something like this, but we can also go in structures, in systems, and in, in components, that means that we can also follow up um, um, something like a HVAC system or, or um, uh, some ducts or, or something like this that goes across several rooms. So this is not limited to to the room. Um, and we can also, um, I think in this case we've done this, show things that are located inside uh, this room because there is some one of these uh, famous ceilings and we have also a picture of the of the ceiling then there. So you can also, also uh, the one who does the, the remediation can identify the things that are in there. And you can say this must be um, remediated or this must be uh, taken out. And if you, oops. And if you click on the very room, this is also or, uh, again done with the image annotator you can see uh, the latest measured values and you can also see that we also uh, not only uh, took s different uh, chemicals in there but we can also map of course the, the other uh, physical parameters of uh, the room like the, the area or the volume of the room so that you can calculate uh, back to the things. And as this is the, the current, it shows the current status but you can also uh, look for all measured values. Oops. They are listed below, so you see all the values that have been measured in this room, and then you can also see after a remediation, for example, that there are a difference, or you can see the trends, and so on. I think I switch now to Alex to give you some more insight in the in the oh, background? Uh, there's not so much more to say. <laughs> yeah. okay. now, so this is the, the standard uh, uh, com components, uh, like the filtered format we've, we've already seen. So as you might now know, you can filter for uh, uh, area or for mass concentration uh, for gas and so on. So there's no magic behind <laughs> Maybe, I'm not sure how familiar you are with the uh, semantic image annotator. This is really a handy thing. I, I think there was a di different use case when this was uh, published before. But we thought it's really a good uh, use case here to use it also for the, the navigation through the building uh, levels. So uh, when we start from the page here, so you can say, okay, this is, let's say, the site of uh, the University in Regensburg. You can go there. And luckily, it always open uh, the box, so we have to click at least two times. So we have been thinking of adding here some direct navigation paths or whatever. So now we are here. Now we see the details below. 
so University of Regensburg, and we see at least two buildings. We entered here, it's the Fieldberg uh, building and uh, uh, Audimax. And for every building, you get uh, a detailed uh, annotation here. So this means that image here is annotated uh, with the location of that building. And how does that happen? For example, if we go to the Fieldberg building here, we go uh, to the um, media file, and here's the option to define one of these areas here, or to move it like this. You can move it around, or you can resize it like this, something like this. You can remove it at a new area. So that comes all from the uh, image annotator. During uh, the setup of this system, we discovered, oh, um, it would be nice if we have uh, not only the area as an annotation, but also, for example, show uh, some kind of a, a traffic light, red light for, oh, this is critical, don't enter this room anymore, yellow, oh, maybe just for a short time, enter this room, green, everything okay, you can uh, go and listen. Uh, something like this. So we are thinking about really continue working on this and contribute a little bit to uh, the semantic image annotator to make this happen. So we can think of not having uh, only these rectangular shapes, but also maybe the pins and the pins colored with the result from a, a, a semantic query and so on. So there is still uh, uh, room to improve. But for the moment, it really works nice. Uh, and it's, it's really a good way to, to use this also for a visual navigation if, if you have um, floor plans or whatever. So one of course can also think to not only use this as a pollutant register, but also for facility management, for IT management, for example, you can uh, uh, show your building, uh, your room structure. You can say, okay, here and here is a printer, here's the server located. You can use it for uh, fire emergency plans and whatever. Every time you have something that uh, uses a building structure and uh, has some images of the different levels. Yeah, so, okay, yeah. Uh, yeah, maybe let's go to the, the measured values. This was also a little bit tricky. How shall we express uh, the physics and the, the kind of quantity, measured values, actual values. So we decided to create a flexible structure to um, to define new uh, measurements. Like there is um, PCB, oh, I don't know where we have values in, 28. So here it's, it's, it's all in German, there is no uh, localization for English yet, so this is a, a kind of quantity, I think it's the correct translation. So it says it's mass concentration for gas. The kind of quantity is also more or less hard-coded in, in the wiki with uh, a property, and with that you can use the unit conversation mechanisms that was in, uh, that's within uh, SMW. So. You can say one milligram per uh, cubic meter uh, equals 201 and so on. So this uh, is some magic that's within SMW. So everywhere you use it, uh, you can say, okay, for, for now it's interesting to have it in this uh, uh, unit representation. And it, it's quite interesting because this mechanism, no, no, interesting. Yeah. this mechanism allows you to, to enter virtually any kind of measurement this can be also for asbestos, for example, you don't have a measurement uh, in, in grams per cubic meter or something like this, but in, in, um, um, I don't know the English word at the moment, uh, fibers. Fibers, yeah, that's it, fibers, fibers per cubic meter. So this is completely different from the physics. Um, and this uh, construction with the um, measurement unit uh, allow, or, the, or the quantity, uh, the kind of quantity that you use allows you to be very flexible but physically correct and, and it allows you also to use, to make use of the um, automatic uh, transforming of the uh, different units. Okay. I think that's it mainly. Hmm? That's, that, that's it mainly, yeah. So. <laughs> 
If you have any questions, please feel free. Yeah, exactly. That's what you currently can do is you have an image which could be a floor plan or whatever, and you can uh, create these rect rectangular boxes, and this creates the, an annotation that links to uh, something. And uh, the other way around, this would also be interesting to, uh, let's say, feedback data that comes from an ask query and use it for some visualization on on uh, the image, like. The thing was, I, I could imagine of, okay, we create a, a red rack angular if there's a critical value, or uh, we add another pin uh, like in, in, in semantic maps, but uh, relevant to this uh, floor plan. So this is still some, some things uh, that can be done. There, there would be a, a different approach to use something like the industry formation class um, to get in CID data or, or building information management data if this is already available for um, nuclear plants, for, for the decommissioning of nuclear plants. We also intend to use such kind of things. Uh, the point there is that you often have a 3D model and then you would clearly link to the 3D model and you can link to, to separate items. <coughs> it is a different thing, than, but you usually don't have a 3D model of a university building. It's a bit too expensive. Uh, the ontology development, do you mean you have an RFS export component or just the modeling inside the semantic inside? No, we used uh, Protegy uh, for ourselves to, let's say, create the, the model. Uh, but then it's more or less, no, let's say this way, uh, at, at Gesinati we use uh, a framework uh, more or less comparable to the mobile framework, but mm. in, with Java. <laughs> Uh, which we use for deploying uh, content to the wiki. So there is some kind of a transformation step between, let's say, formal description of an ontology and uh, the more or less implemented ontology in the Java deployment tool. Uh, but as, as soon as it is there, then uh, pages like this can be created out of these uh, models. But it's a specific use case for us because we reuse uh, in the semantic apps part of our ontologies, for example, persons. Persons is in more or less every uh, wiki we have or organization. So we just take what we need and then it deploys what, what needs to be deployed. And no mapping to No, not automatic mapping, no, no. Okay, thank you. Yes. 